Can't think of a better way to spend a Sunday morning than filming World War II warbirds. Mind the traffic, Ted? Um, Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, where all the, uh, the business jets land, all the posh people. And two warbirds, B-17 Flying Fortress and a B-24 Liberator. In the films they look big and huge and menacing and powerful. Inside they are small, cramped, they are so tiny. Not only is it a great thrill to see these warbirds in action, it's also fascinating and very humbling to meet the people who actually flew with them during World War II. I'm John Barry B-U-R-Y, originally from New Jersey, now living in Florida for the last 30-some years. I was a navigator in uh, uh, the 8th Air Corps uh, back in World War II, stationed in Polebrook, England. Some of them were very easy missions, some were not too good. The navigator table is like a piece of plywood, uh, about two by three. Incidentally, the lead navigators did not have any machine guns because we were expected to do our math work instead of shooting at enemy planes. On one particular mission, we were coming back uh, crossing over the Zyder Z, and uh, at that point, uh, our intelligence didn't know that there were any flak installations, but the Germans had put, put the flak guns on barges. And uh, we descended uh, down to 10,000 feet, and at that point, the Germans started shooting with the uh, flak guns, and uh, it was a, a very, very rough flight. We lost a couple of engines, we lost our hydraulic landing gears, we lost our brakes, we had uh, fuel leaks, but thank God I got the uh, plane into the first airfield in, in England, right over Zyder Z, and the pilot, after landing, uh, steered over into the grass, and the weight of the plane just sunk the plane into the ground, and that's the way we stopped. One of the pilots of the B-24, Pappy, whose father worked on Liberators during the war, takes us through some of the trials and tribulations that the Collings Foundation have to face when keeping these warbirds airborne and active for other people to watch and enjoy. Little jack screw right here. A lot of times, because of the weather and oil and stuff, it'll stick. So what we'll do is, if it happens to while we're you know, doing a run-up or something like that, it won't work. We shut down the engine, the cannon goes out on the, uh, on the wing and hits the governor with a hammer. <laughs> what happened was it broke off and it was bouncing around on top of that piston. And then it got at a certain angle and the piston actually shoved it right out through the top of the cylinder. Uh, it's not like a jet, it's a handful. It's hard to taxi it. Uh, it doesn't want to maintain directional control. It just it, it's got a uh, swivel nose wheel, so like a bad shopping cart sometimes. <laughs> the brakes are touchy. You press on them and nothing happens, and so you go, oh my gosh, well you press harder and all of a sudden the pulse gets all the way down to the, down to the wheel. And it doesn't have any anti-skid. You can blow these tires on a landing real easy. Uh, once you get it airborne, it's just like any other airplane, except it's very heavy on the controls. It doesn't answer right away. One of the things it does do very nicely, if you're a little fast and you're a little high, you do what they call a side slip. Actually put the fuselage to yeah. like this. This airplane does beautiful side slips. <laughs> that big old fuselage right there really is very nice. <laughs> so we have 351 Mustang. What 
a good way to spend a Sunday morning. Pete's got a church, huh? Not going to church again. Last time it was trouble. Bosses for beers on a Sunday afternoon.